Hello, back again to do another unboxing and review. Today we're going to be looking at a product from GameSir. This is the F1 Joystick Grip. As you might be able to tell, this is meant to be used in conjunction with your smartphone. No, smartphone not included. So yes, this is just the grip. And they, I assume it's kind of like a track system where they're, these uh, the grip extenders slide out to the left and right to accommodate different size smartphones. Uh, we also see here this is included as well, this little swing arm that terminates in a little uh, thumb pad. And of course you can see that's meant to overlay um, the game or applications of virtual joystick, which usually resides in this corner or maybe that corner, which by the way, I think this can move from this side to this side. Okay, so um, let's talk about GameStir here. Uh, I actually, this isn't, this isn't not my first product from them. I've actually purchased this prior. Um, this controller, I've done a full review on it and I was impressed enough by this, especially at the price point that I got it, that I decided to let me get another product from these guys. So here we are. All right, so let's go ahead and do a quick uh, look around the box here. Um, we see in the front now, on the back, you can see kind of what I was talking about earlier, how the two sides are connected there, and there it goes, they, how the, it splits open, or slides open to accommodate your phone, and then, okay, there's someone playing a game, there's a QR code there, we have an actual barcode made in China, um, this by the way is the retail box, it's nice to get a box, and not just a generic uh, thing with, on the front, game controller or something like that, so, um, yeah, and uh, oh, there's some more down here. Uh, okay, the thing got a little crumpled there, but that says conduct conductive joystick. Of course, referring to that. And then we have, what does it say, ergonomic handle, detachable swing arm. So, like I said, you can move it from side to side. I'm not sure if you can put it up here as well, but at least you can go from this side to this side in these bottom corners, which most people would use. Um, all right, so going down here. Uh, okay, we talk about. Uh, there we go. We have five angle adjustable stand. All right, so I assume the back here there's a little stand, kickstand type thing. Of course, we'll see that once we open it up. Um, also, I've noticed there's this Tencent Games. I don't know if this is a collaboration or whatnot. I assume so, since both the icons are the same size and predominantly on the front and top of the box. Okay, now um, impression of the packaging. Well, it, it, it works. Um, and. Uh, <laughs> this is this supposed to be like carbon fiber looking down here? Anyway, yeah, it's okay. I mean, it has a lot of black. Um, kind of, I think they're trying to go for like a more mature look instead of like super bright blue and yellow colors, which, yeah, I guess it works. That looks fine. I would say one thing though, from a distance, it's kind of hard to tell what the product is since um, the background's so black and then the, obviously the item here, so it kind of all blends in, so you end up only seeing this. So you might say from a distance it looks like a smartphone <laughs> until you get there and realize it's just an accessory. A little more contrast I think would have been a good idea here. Okay, but beyond that, uh, let's go. Oh, by the way, there's their slogan, uh, Game Sir, Just Play. Okay, so let's go ahead and do the unboxing. All right, so um, it was closed with these little circle stickers, so I just went ahead and peeled one of them back here. Okay, so the product is in this tray. Nothing else left in the box. Okay, so we have black on black. Oh, let's just pull it out. Okay, nothing underneath, no accessories, no wires, or nothing like that. Again, they really don't need that. Okay, so initial impressions just by feel. <laughs> it's uh, really, really light. Now, um, I understand why it would be light, because when you think about it, you just need, a, what, a couple springs, um, and then, well, of course, these two grips here, which are primarily hollow, so it doesn't need to be heavy. Um, however, I, just the way the look, the shape, and the kind of makes you think of something more like this, which obviously has an integrated battery and fans and of course the associated motors. So anyway, something like this is gonna be obviously heavier than this. However, this does feel really light. Not saying that it's necessarily bad, but just keep that in mind when you get it. Okay, so let's go ahead. Um, I can see the swing arm here. And um, let's look at the back. 
Okay, this must be that little kickstand. <laughs> All right. Well, we'll get, we'll get into that in a bit. Here, I think I got it this time. Okay, so <laughs> there it goes. So this whole thing comes down. All right, and then I see you put this little tab in one of those slots to change the angle, right? Oh, okay. Um, another thing just right off there from just doing that, when I was pulling this down, uh, I, I, I mean, it, it, I was trying to be careful not to have it break because it, the hinge system down here isn't the best, so it has that kind of borderline. And not saying that it would break, but be careful when you pull that down. Uh, okay, the texture in here. Okay, this is just like foam. The back, that's plastic. And these are uh, little, um, what are these? How many sides? Uh, four, two, six. These hexagons here, uh, although they are in fact elevated and give it some texture, they are not like um, rubber or silicone or anything. They are just the same plastic that the rest of it's made out of. Okay, this uh, pad here. Oh, that's kind of cool. So, um, the part that touches your screen will be touching your screen is uh, it feels like silicone. And then we have this little um, pad. Um, um, looks like it's metal that slides within. So, essentially, that metal thing does not directly touch your screen. The pad, silicone pad here, this semi-clear material, um, stops scratches. So that's cool. Um, also, the swing arm does have uh, two hinges. See one attaching to the main controller body, and then there's this one at the end. See, so all right. So two points of articulation there on the hinges. Um, as far as removing it, okay. You see close there. It's just basically you just pull it off and then clip it on over. Uh, I don't, could you go to anyone? Let me see here. Um, yeah, okay. So, I'm not sure if this whole thing comes up. We'll figure that out later, but anyways. Okay, um, the sides open. So, I guess that makes sense. You could maybe plug in a cable, charge your phone or whatever. So, okay, that's a pretty good idea to have that side open there. Uh, the actual grips, you can see there's some indentations for your fingers to wrap around but once again this is all the same material just regular old plastic all right now let's do the separation to see if um so yeah just as expected we have a spring there's no button at least that so far i haven't seen any button to lock it in so the compression of the spring is, I guess, what holds in your phone. Um, let's talk about that because um, holding in your phone is kind of important, right? So it looks like, if you can notice here, there's like a little ledge on each side, right? So the majority of your phone's weight will be supported by that and that. So it shouldn't just drop straight down. But as far as um, holding it from the sides, it is the spring's job there. And also on the sides, it does look like these little here, they kind of stop your phone from just popping out the front. So yeah, there's nothing on the top, however, to stop your phone from falling out should you do this. But I don't know why you would do that. So, all right, it looks like it'll be adequate. Um, so, but I will say this, from just touch holding this, I'm not getting the same impression that I when I was holding something like this. Of course, there is a notable price difference between these two, and they're meant to do two different things. But um, yeah, I mean, a little butter materials anywhere on here, I think would have really helped. But again, for the price point, I suppose that this is um, okay. All right, I'm going to go ahead and uh, put a phone in here, and uh, we'll give it a shot, try. All right, so I've had some time to use this and test it out. And to go ahead and demonstrate, I brought out two phones. My LG V20. This has a 5.7 inch screen and it has a slim case on it. 
Okay, one of these slim clear acrylic cases. All right, and this is my HomTom HD10. This one does not have a case on it. Um, oh, this is a 5.5 inch screen. Okay, now both of these phones have a tempered glass screen protector, and I'll explain why that's important in a bit. Um, well, in regards to using this. Okay, so um, let's go ahead and start with the um, LG V20. And so to load it, I found the best method is to essentially open it up like so. I use my pinky there to keep this down somewhat. And I use my thumb to push that side up. Okay, so. And now, because I have one of these little charging dongle things on the bottom, see that? I use this kind of rocking method where I put it in there and kind of rock it upwards and underneath that. Boom. Okay, so now um, the phone's in. And as far as uh, retaining the phone, it actually seems to be holding it pretty well. Uh, a little better than I expected. I mean, you have these, uh, you have these really deep, or I mean, yeah, well, uh, these things extend out and across the phone's top enough that I'm confident that the phone is going to fall out towards me. As far as down here, these retaining ledges, which are more like little horns, they're coming up. Keep in mind, this is the one with the slim case on it. These horns are still coming up a little past halfway the thickness of the phone. Therefore, I don't think it's going to drop out down into my lap or on the floor. All right. So, okay, so the phone does stay in there. That's good. Now, let's, you might ask, well, why then did, if, okay, so if it fits a 5.7 inch screen phone, of course it's going to fit a 5.5, right? Okay, but the reason I brought this phone out is to point out something. You see this phone here, how it has the camera, and it sticks out from the bottom. There you go. See that? So it does protrude down a little bit, or out. Now, this one, although this one has two cameras and quite a bit more stuff going on back here, because I have the slim case, the camera elements end up being flush because of the slim case, of course. But, if you have a phone that has the, bot the lens sticking out for whatever reason, maybe you don't have a case or whatever, and you try to put it in here, guess where that camera's gonna go? It's gonna go right into these foam pads, either this one or this one, depending on what way you turn the phone. Now, so when I put in the HomTom, the camera was pushing down into this foam with enough force that it left a little impression of my lens on the foam. Now, okay, yeah, I know, it's foam, so, and I checked the camera, luckily it still works, but if that's something I'm going to do over and over and over, and you might say, well, the foam's going to wear down a little because, you know, it'll repeat it. But hey, I don't want enough pressure on my camera element that it's leaving impressions in foam. No. So, you know what? That's immediate. I'm not using it with this foam because of that reason. And I'm thinking it wouldn't have been hard at all to have um, a kind of a cutout here, like a well, like or like a hole, a pit, so that the camera elements could drop into that pit and hence not have any pressure put on them. Um, I know cameras can be in different locations, but usually they're towards the top of the phone, right, on the back. And, um, yeah, some cameras, some have multiple cameras in a vertical orientation, so the hole would have to be good. But anyway, at least they could try for most phones. In this case, no, you just cram your phone up against the phone. Now, all right, so that's that. So I'm going to go ahead and, of course, then go ahead and use the LG V20. And that's what I did. Now... Let's talk about um, this here, okay? So how is this thing to use? This little pad here, controller, thumb pad. Now, yeah, it's not very good. <laughs> now let me explain. I remember I said I was using the LG V20 there. Um, I tried to use this. In fact, I pulled up a game, Shadow Fight 3, cool game by the way. And when this thing is stretched out, according to my phone, this here falls right on top of the virtual um, joypad for the game. And I'm thinking, awesome, perfect fit, okay? It was the same size, it went right where it was supposed to, so this ended up being just the right length. Okay, anyway, so I thought, well, this is going to work. I'm trying to play, no movement, couldn't do anything. So, of course, I had to stop using this and use my thumb again, otherwise I was going to lose the match. And 
the excuse that my controller wasn't working is pretty lame, right? Okay, although in this case it was true. All right, so anyway, I'm thinking, uh, okay, let me try another phone. So I went ahead and got this phone out. Now keep in mind, this one also has a tempered uh, glass screen protector on it, but um, it act, this worked a little. And when I say a little, I mean it still wasn't good. And to explain why, another thing to consider is for certain games, like this one here, Bomb Squad, using this would significantly hinder your performance. Why? Because it drastically limits your range of motion and in the game. And this game is very movement intensive. So it has this cool thing where you can go ahead and touch the screen and see visually the rep the input that you're, you know, entering by using the virtual joypad. So you can see here, you know, up, down, yeah, the arrows following the movement of my finger, okay? And i.e. my inputs. If you use this, I think you can figure out where I'm going with this. Once I put it on here, even if I get it to work, if I go all the way to the max up that this thing allows me to do, if it even reads, all right, you can see that's max up. And that arrow is not nearly as long as the one that I was doing when I used my thumb. So this would not allow you to move as quickly in this game, which would obviously hurt your performance. Why would you use this? Okay, so by at this point, it's pretty obvious. I have one phone that this doesn't work at all. The other one, it works poorly with. So you know what? This thing's got to go. But for those who maybe have a phone that this little thing works on and um, the application you're using supports the very limited amount of motion that this thing provides, you might say, well, hey, I still want to try using this. Can I switch it over to this side? The answer is yes. However, there's something you have to remember. But let's first talk about how you get it over there. So you take this off first, okay? So the only thing left on the side will be the, that part. Now you get a flathead screwdriver, in this case a scissor, um, stick it in like so, and you're just going to basically roll this and pry it off. At which point you'll stick this little thing over here and go ahead and attach this um, <laughs> subpar little pad. Okay, so this thing, and also to further go on, <laughs> you see in its uh, neutral position, it's not quite dead center. See, mine is higher up. It's more like center but high, not center center. So, yeah, you know what? I'm not using anything anyway. That can go in the trash. Um, so, now we're back to just this. And you're thinking, okay, so at least I got a grip. Oh, wait, wait, I have a kickstand thing. That's kind of cool. So, let me try using that. Keep in mind, my fingernails are, you know, normal length, especially for a guy. All right, okay. So I'm gonna try to open this thing here. And you saw earlier, I managed to get it open. So I try to repeat that, because I was gonna use it as a stand and watch a video or something, right? So here you go. I'm gonna put my fingernail in that hole. All right, well, try again. Huh? All right, different finger. What? Well, here's what's happening. You, I have to get my finger close enough to get my fingernail in there. But when I do that, it pushes in the kickstand just ever so little, and now, I can't get a grip on the little ledge. So, may I push from the bottom? I thought maybe I can push here, right? And this side will come out. No, that doesn't work. Go from the side, eh, go here this way, no, okay. Maybe grab the little thing in the cell, try to pull it. This, this is stupid, okay? You could, they could have made this little slot just a little bit taller so I could actually get my fingernail in there before my finger actually pushes in. Now I know if you have long nails, then maybe you can, you know, pry it out. But this just shows another why uh, that couldn't be a little wider. No, it couldn't be because because then it might work, right? <laughs> so um, kickstand may work when you can get it out. The little thumb pad thing that's trash. I've already thrown that one away. In fact, I'm gonna pry this little thing out. I don't need this because I ain't using that other thing. Okay. Okay. So, this is what we're left with. Um, yeah. Now, to be fair, I did use it in just this form as you're seeing here. And yeah, it was, you know, I kept, I kept my hands off the screen, you know, so it, it was a little more comfortable to hold. So, 
in the end, you do end up with something that you can use, but after taking out all the, the, the limited features it had, I understand the price point, but even so, most of the features I can't even use, except just the most basic holds your phone. Uh, no, this is, um, it's, it's not doing what it was supposed to do, and can I live with it? Can it still be usable? I suppose, but I'm not going to recommend something like that. And on top of that, since I'm already not that happy with it, then that kind of, well, hey, somewhat cheap feel that it has starts to become more and more to the forefront. And then you start thinking, yeah, this is just hard, cheap plastic. They couldn't even... And any one of these things could have been easily made better and not raised the cost that much. And I would say, hey, this is a pretty cool product. And, um, yeah, as far as it being, well, it's lightweight, um, let's face it, this is still the same size and no one's expecting this to be made out of lead, okay? So it could be a little heavier and because of that you could have maybe put in little metal bits every once in a while to give it that little more premium feel. So this is usable, but I would not recommend it. And that's kind of a shame because my first experience with their products was actually a pretty good one. So, hey, um, Gamester, more of this, less of this.